All right. These are some uh, some stuff that I have no idea what they are. Hip sent it to me. I planted them. I lost the label. It got destroyed. So I'm gonna try to graft all of them. Risking it all. Um, they're tiny. I don't know if my blade is actually even like. I just smash them, but we'll see. So, what did you guys do? so they're all just gonna go onto that one plant.
Dr. Campbell said she doesn't think these sporadic mites are directly harming our ants of the Golden Empire because these types of astigmatid mites, as far as their records show, are fungivores, bacteriovores, and scavengers. Oh, what a relief, right, Gregs? Additionally, get this. These doodle-nymph mites riding the ants don't even have mouths <coughs> or anuses at this life stage. They are specially designed at this stage to simply ride the ant and disperse to a new area. So why did these mites, which normally eat ants' garbage or stuff caused by our ants' garbage, decide to enter this doodle-nymph phase in the first place and attach to the ants? Well, Dr. Campbell said the mites enter this doodle-nymph dispersal stage due to environmental cues either related to the host, our ants, or their host's habitat, our ant setup group. She said that often one sees unhealthy mite loads arrive when the host is suffering already from other issues or if the environment suddenly experiences drastic droughts, overwatering, or changes in food resources, meaning either too much food or too little. Well, that made for a lot of possible circumstances. It meant that the mites somehow entered our setup and decided to enter this ant body attachment phase because either our ants were somehow weakened or sick or because our setup was too dry and no, we do not water our AP outworld in order to keep the ants nesting in the hybrid nest or our setup was too moist and no, our hybrid nest is moistened every few weeks or there was either too much or too little food. My goodness, all such great info but so many more questions. It would have been really hard to tell what really caused these mites to become ant body mites, <laughs> these doodle mites. But what this did tell us was that the typical setup that works for most standard ants, meaning the dry outworld, moist nest arrangement of most ant keepers, was not working out for our golden empire. Now I was also able to get in touch with Raymond Mendez, an expert in keeping captive ant colonies and designer of some of the world's greatest museum ant displays. He said, that in the wild, many ant colonies just simply move when mites appear. From harvester ants to tree ants, colonies move out when these natural cleanup crews show up. He pointed out that if one goes and digs up abandoned ant nests or cuts them to I've got one more to do. Try to make this video shorter than 10 minutes. And other predators or parasites. This ability to move, however, is not available to captive colonies. So ants kept in captivity just have to live with whatever conditions the ant keeper provides for them, and the mites. So what this meant then was that our golden empire and the mites can actually coexist, but they require the space to be able to migrate accordingly. Our ants needed the ability to move away when the mites came to eat their garbage, and mites needed the opportunity to find their garbage, stay around it, but at the same time have conditions consistent enough, hydration and food water that they don't enter this bothersome doodle stage and attach themselves to our ants. So the next step was to offer our golden empire a setup which allowed this movement and migration behavior away from the mite activity. On our Twitter page, we set up a poll, and among all the choices, you guys chose for the ants to move into a huge planted terrarium. By the way, if you guys Not the cleanest cut, but it'll work. Please What's the day? I don't know, I think it's the... 
I'll leave that one blank for now and fill mm -hmm. it in later. Alright. Happy cactusing, guys.